in this video we are gonna do something half mimi and maybe potentially entertaining which is ranking blueprint nodes and we're gonna rank them basically as meaning they are really good useful use them frequently would recommend basically and then d would be used rarely maybe problematic a bit when it comes to performance complex something like that now just by the fact that these nodes or functions or features exist in blueprint it's probably because somebody needed to use them so even d would probably mean i might have to situationally use them or might be useful in rare cases stuff like that so that's kind of how we're gonna rank them i removed some of the nodes from this list that are obviously just must use just to kind of use the functionality of unreal for example spawn actor or create widget or branch these nodes are basically something that you must use when you want to do something so if you want to create an actor you don't have any other choice than spawn actor create widget basically every game you're gonna need some widgets so create widgets you're gonna have to use it and of course branch if you need any conditional logic you're gonna have to use branches so those are all gonna be obviously s tier so let's get into it so the first node that we have is event destroyed this one is obviously nice when you are destroying an actor and you need to do something but I find myself in the actual production when I work on project, I don't use it that much. Usually you don't have to clean up much stuff from the actor. I mean, you have like garbage collection, stuff like that. So all of the obvious things are going to get cleaned. But yeah, I don't think I use it too much, but it's still kind of useful. So I'm going to put it at B. Kind of nice to have, but uh, honestly not that necessary. For loop. Okay, this one is kind of a classic. It's nice, performant. You don't have any for loop with break or for each loop where you have to pass in an array. It's simple first in last index and then you just loop through it. I find it kind of useful and nice especially when prototyping and you just need to spawn something x amounts of times or when you just have like a fixed amount that you do need to do something it's just uh, nice. So honestly I would put this probably S tier or like high A tier. Let's, let's do S tier and maybe we're gonna move it later. Now event tick I think a lot of people would put this in like C or something but I think it's actually pretty nice to have and powerful you also have pre-physics post-physics during physics ticks uh, you can you get like delta seconds it's really nice to have just some event that triggers continuously so I honestly find it nice but the downside of this is that if you're new and don't really know what you're doing you're just gonna abuse this uh, a lot so just for that honestly it's I would put it on A maybe just because <laughs> some people are gonna abuse it heavily but if you just pay attention a little bit and use it nicely I think it's just convenient and nice. Cas2, this is almost something that <laughs> I should have maybe removed from the list because it's generally just nice. Uh, now if you're like uh, interface brained you might put this lower but honestly Cas2 is just nice. It's not something that's uh, memory heavy or doesn't need to be loaded. You can use it frequently especially for widgets. Their like slate system is very object oriented. There's gonna be Cas in there and stuff like that so honestly I think solid probably next to Eventic can be kind of abused but honestly I think for indie games it's kind of an overkill thinking about memory and some like uh, hard references and stuff like that especially when you're a single developer creating like a smaller game you usually don't have to think too much about it but for certain cases and especially for you know mobile game stuff like that you might need to think about memory more but yeah select so this one I find nice but probably a bit underused by people I think which might be nicer for people but I like select especially for simpler stuff the only thing you have to worry about when you I recommend select nodes is that everything that goes into the options has to be evaluated so if you're doing some very complex things on each option then what can happen is your performance might suffer because you're kind of evaluating a lot of stuff so you just have to be careful but I think generally it's pretty nice I like it convenient does implement interface I don't use it that often to be honest so I'm not sure how to rate this one because how I use interfaces is that it's not that agnostic so I have to do this every time does implement interface but I think generally it's decently important just to have it now if you didn't have this it might be like a bit annoying where you might have to do like output a parameter for each uh, interface function so that way you can know if it succeeded or failed or something like that but with this you can kind of track before you even call the function which is nice okay begin play I think this one obviously S tier it's like game starts you need to do something big in play it's not necessary so I didn't remove it from the list because technically you need to do stuff on begin play but it's just generally kind of nice set timer by function name timers honestly pretty nice 
I don't know where I would put them. I use them decent amount. It's good when you have multiple things that need to tick but at different rates and you don't want to do event tick. Even though event tick you can put to tick at different rates, you can only kind of do it once per actor. So if you need some multiple stuff to tick at different rates, timers are nice. So I would put this probably here. Pretty nice. Uh, now do once. For prototyping I find this nice but the only issue with this for me is that do once nodes kind of imply to me that there is probably some flaw with the design or functionality that you're doing like why is this triggering multiple times that you need to use these do once nodes to kind of limit it kind of what's happening before that's kind of what i'm interested in here in production i actually don't even remember if i used it once i probably did somewhere at some point but it's just so rare that i don't even remember it but when prototyping stuff like when i don't want to bother with like figuring out why it's triggered multiple times i just want to trigger once just to test something kind of okay but it's so situational that honestly i would put this like at maybe d tier i I don't see it in production or something serious because just of the spam like what's happening here yeah so the next one is the gate this one i think i feel kind of similar to do once it could be fine i think it's probably more useful than do once still a little bit confusing complex but you know you have a gate you can enter and go through the gate and then you can open and close it with some different functionality but the node can get messy when you're using it and I think it's pretty situational where even where you need it you can probably find a different way to do the same thing. Probably put this at C maybe. Maybe a bit more than the ones. The ones is I don't really find yet that useful. Now we have set. I made this list like two weeks ago so I don't really remember why I set it with notify but I think the reason is that it's just normal set obviously I don't even have to put it in the list that's like S tier like if you want to set a variable which is something that you're gonna do a lot that is fine but with notify basically means that uh, you can have rep notifies on your variables meaning you can when the variable is changed on the server it's gonna replicate to the clients that are um, relevant to the actor and that can have multiple uses so just for people that are not familiar with it we're gonna go to the actor here so rep notify is basically you have a variable you can click on a variable and do rep notify and then you get uh, on rep new variable meaning when this variable replicates uh, or meaning server changes the value it's going to automatically replicate and then the clients can do some stuff uh, and also i think replicates to a server but yeah so this triggers and then people can do stuff and it can be kind of nice for situations where you have let's say you have a chest uh and maybe this is the relevancy area of the chest and if you're not familiar with relevancy uh you should read about the replication for unreal it's pretty important but let's say a player is over here this chest is not even loaded because the player is too far but another player comes closer to the chest opens it and now this chest has different states so when this player comes in and the chest becomes relevant you probably want it to update you don't want it to have the state that the client had it in before so then maybe you can do like enough for the chest state some boolean that the chest is open and then the client's chest can trigger those events and play animations or something so there is stuff like that that you can use the rep notify for yeah so for those reasons i think rep notify is also really useful i'm not sure where i would put it it's not completely necessary but i think it's frequently used so i think i'm gonna do maybe somewhere in here a i'm scared to put it in a plus i'm not sure if it's a plus type of thing but yeah delay so these types of delays i find can be kind of scary depending on what you're doing because just doing an arbitrary delay that's gonna complete and trigger something if there is some state of the game that changes or this actor is destroyed and doesn't trigger there could be weird stuff where you maybe are triggering something that you don't want to trigger you want it cancelled but because of the delay it's still happening stuff like that so i can see the delay kind of being scary but sometimes useful uh, I would put it more like here, like it's nice sometimes, but generally I try to avoid using delays. There is usually better stuff to do with that. Now we have get unit direction. So this one I think is one of the more based ones, which is what you do is basically give it two locations and it gives you direction from one to the other. And if you're not familiar, it gives you a unit vector, which means it's normalized from zero to one. And it's basically telling you a direction to where like a thing is pointing to. And uh, honestly, it's good for like line tracing, figuring out like dot products from some objects, stuff like that. So I find it generally decently useful. I probably put it like somewhere here. Like it is kind of situational, but it's just like a good note to have. Reconstruct. This one also, I think I like it even more than construct. So this is, if you don't know, for widgets, they have preconstruct and construct. Construct is kind of as a begin play and preconstruct is almost like a construct for blueprints where you can do something uh, in the editor. So for example, you maybe have a container for let's say inventory and you want to fill it up with slots, but you don't want to fill it up when the game starts and then you see your changes or debug. 
you want it in the editor, you can use the preconstruct to do some functionality that you don't have to like actually run the game in the editor. So I actually find it's probably a bit better than construct. Not sure where I would put it. I'm not sure, let's put it in A. I think it's pretty good node, generally useful. Reverse for each loop. Honestly, I just never use this. I'm sure there is like database, web app, web development stuff that that uses like reverse uh, looping arrays and stuff like that. But honestly, in game development, I don't even know when I would use like reverse loops. So honestly, I don't think I ever used it. Maybe like for testing stuff, but generally I just don't use it. Then we have end play. I mean, end play reasons are kind of nice if we do something like this. So this can be kind of nice where you can have an actor and then you can say, is it destroyed? Was there a level transition? Did it just uh, end play and editor happen? So what basically happened? And then you can do some functionality based on it. But I would put it probably in the destroyed category where it's fine for the situations, but probably not that frequently used. Usually you kind of clean up stuff before, but maybe you need something extra. Construct, I mean, as I said, for the pre-construct, I think it's kind of nice, but I don't know, I like pre-construct just for that unique f functionality, so I'm gonna put construct in here. Now for this one, I should have probably taken a better screenshot, this is just taking too much space. Okay, now we have a sequence one. This one actually I use a lot, it's really nice for organization, and also if you have branches in your logic, and you don't want to combine like true or false branch into like another new thing, it's kind of awkward, weird. So sequences are just nice general. I think I would put them even like, is it even, I think it's maybe even better than begin play. It's just nice for organization. And as far as I know, they are like almost nothing for performance or maybe they're even optimized out completely. I'm not sure. I would have to kind of read about it, but I think they could technically be optimized out where they do not take any performance at all after compiler takes care of it. Because what they're basically doing is whatever uh, for then zero, whatever outcome you get in there, you just go to then one. So then that basically means that if we, let's say this is our code and we have true and false here, something is happening and maybe, I don't even know, something in here, true, false, maybe we have in here and here. And let's say this is some node and this node has a sequence and then the sequence says the second thing is here and then something else happens. What basically is happening in here is if you just take this and connect it to this one and then connect it to this one, connect it to this one and connect it to this one, you basically get the same uh, functionality as sequence places it down. So I'm not sure if it can be optimized away or not, but yeah. That's kind of what's happening. Okay, so next we have dedicated servers. So dedicated server, what it basically does is when you have a multiplayer game, it's gonna give you a true or false statement, meaning is this current event running on the server or on the client, or is this function running on the client or on the dedicated server. Now for listen servers, this is gonna be also false. So you have to be careful, this is just for dedicated servers. But I generally find it nice when working multiplayer games, it's almost almost a must-have to kind of figure stuff out where is stuff happening. You have a bunch uh, more other that is like testing, is it like uh, triggering on the owner or not an owner and stuff like that, who has authority, but this one I find it even more useful than those. So I'm probably putting it somewhere here maybe, it's generally pretty nice. Next we have a switch. And switch is kind of like a select, but I probably use it even more. It's kind of nice, especially since select can ha have the performance issue while switch doesn't, but switch can have maybe duplication issues depending on what you're creating. There might be like some duplicate code, stuff like that, and more nodes. Uh, so that's kind of another thing, but yeah. But still I would put this one, switch is kind of based. When you have just states and you just do for each state, kind of nice. For each loop. So this one is also kind of nice now. It is more performance intensive than for loop, but not by that much. I did some like performance testing and it's probably like 30% maybe more expensive per loop, which might seem like a lot, but for loops are generally not that crazy, even in blueprints. There is some overhead compared to C++, but they are decently optimized, so they generally they're okay. But yeah, I would still find them kind of similar, honestly, but maybe I would put, let's put these guys here. Maybe something like that, switches are just pasted. I don't know, something like that. They're still kind of similar, they do the similar thing. The one one thing, one is just kind of giving you a reference to the specific thing, so you don't have to do like a get index and then additional stuff that you have to do for loop, so 
that's kind of nice here so now we have set timer by event now we had set timer by function name here so which one do i use more and which one is more useful honestly i think initially i was using more uh, set timer by event but i think lately i probably am using more set by function name but yeah the set timer by event has the additional functionality that it can have delayed functions while the other one can't but i think i'm gonna put it just a little bit before but still pretty similar here you also can have additional create event node that helps you so if you have timer by event you can do so usually what you would do is uh, custom event and then connect this here but then you can have this weird thing kind of latching onto it which is weird so you can do create event and this is to dispatch it to another thing so you can then do custom event and now we get the same thing as if you had it connected but now you can move this wherever you want and for example maybe this triggers and begin play but then this needs to be somewhere else you can kind of organize it a bit better now we have get all actors of class i think generally i would put this distantly low because usually kind of what's happening in your code where you have to like do this sometimes you do have to but in like 90 percent of the time i think you can find a better solution and also I remember listening to some talk like half a year ago talking about all of these getting optimized i think they optimized like two out of like five or six of these get actor so there is like few of them so you have get actor as a class uh i'm not sure which one was ah uh, they didn't write it i think so a few of them they said they optimized where before it was kind of a linear cost for the functions meaning if you had one object in a scene and then you had thousand objects in the scene it's gonna cost one thousand times more to find your object on average in the second scenario but they said that they were optimizing this so it's logarithmic now uh, but yeah you have like multiple of them i think this one is maybe optimized and maybe get actor of class i think maybe something like that and then the other ones still use the linear ones so just kind of to explain what i mean by linear logarithmic uh, it means basically this so this would be uh let's do c so count and then we can do time here so how long it takes depending on how many things are in the scene and the new ones probably do something like this so they do not scale in our they scale a little bit per new object but on average you're gonna get way better performance if you're talking about the old one i would probably put this on these just like try to avoid it probably very situational but with the new ones i think still generally try to avoid it but probably like here i guess you can use it and it might be decently performant uh, but still kind of what's happening in your code that you need to just get all actors of thousands or hundreds in your scene like what's happening uh the land uh, next tick is kind of convenient and nice so instead of using like uh, real time you can just uh, offset something by a frame which i honestly find a bit more useful so i would put it in here i use it from time to time when needed still not that much and it's decently situational a retriggerable delay this one can be nice for some situations because what you can do is basically call something and if that thing is called again the delay is going to reset instead of triggering two times or ignoring the call stuff like that so probably something like this i would say a bit better than delay but still nothing crazy and the last thing is get owner if you never worked with ownership in unreal this one is probably pretty useless but when you start working on multiplayer stuff and then you have stuff like a gun that is child of a uh, character and then the gun has like a bullet that is child of the gun getting an owner can be kind of nice so you can quickly get their location rotation scale some additional stuff and also for multiplayer to figure out you can use get owner to maybe check if somebody's owner is like a player controller so you know wherever this thing is triggering on has the authority over it stuff like that so there is like some stuff in multiplayer where it's nice but if you're not using multiplayer probably not that useful but i think because you can use it in multiple ways it's pretty good i'd probably put it like low a high b maybe something like that um but yes yeah, so this is the tire list so we have a test sequence i'm not sure why i put this first but yeah just generally you can kind of move them around a bit but generally sequence pretty nice just organization of huge help especially when you have branching pads begin play i mean game starts we need to do stuff really useful uh switch if you're not using switches a lot and maybe rely more on like object oriented stuff stuff like that i would suggest trying it out trying to use enum switches stuff like that they can be pretty useful for loop pretty performant really nice convenient especially for prototyping for each loop of course looping through objects then doing something with them pretty convenient nice and just a random one for vectors there is more stuff for vectors i've probably put in like a and s tier because with game dev you work a lot with vectors and unreal gives you a lot of utility functions that help with uh, random stuff relating to that so yeah that's about it see you in the next video.